Hi, and welcome to Drink This. I'm Bruce. Yeah. As always, co-host Ron. Co-ho Ron? Co-ho. Co-host Ron down awesome. on the end. And our special guest tonight, Frank. Welcome, Frank. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. Having Italian, Frank. Having some Italian wine. What are the odds? Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so where are we starting? We're starting with uh, red wine. This we looks are like starting. a red wine. It is a red wine. It's an Italian red wine. And it is a uh, Sangiovese. So the, the premise for tonight's show, as mentioned, is uh, we're drinking, we're comparing three different wines at a relatively similar price point, all by Umberto Cesari, very well-known, well-respected um, winemaker uh, who's growing a lot in popularity recently. He's from the, which region? Romagna. From Roma, uh, Romagna. Yes, exactly. Emilia Emil uh, Romagna. That's in northern Emilia. Italy. Yeah, Emilia. He, I think he grew up in uh, Bologna, in that, right. in that area. Right. right. So what we are trying right now is a Sangiovese Reserva, mm -hmm. uh, 2017. It's a nice typical Sangiovese, I would say. It's uh, on the lighter side. Yeah, not overly right. complex. Red fruits, a bit of uh, bit of vanilla. Yeah, it's not very bold. Not very. Nope, bold. I agree. It's but not a... I don't think the grape is necessarily a, a bold grape. I think it's a. Um, can be once some years have gone by. These are all 2017s, so you're not going to get much boldness in a younger wine. Right. It tastes like a young wine, but this wine, I believe, was meant to be drunk on the wine side, on the young side. Hints of chocolate, but dark chocolate. But there's a little bitterness that you get from a dark chocolate, and that I get in the um, in the finish. Mm -hmm. So before, when we tasted, I I had a nutty. Uh, a nutty taste, but that's basically it. The cocoa I'm getting more the bitterness from the chocolate. Like yeah, a chocolatey bitter. Yeah, but this is not a uh, a bad wine for under twenty dollars. I I agree. I, you uh, liking it? I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, you know, right now we haven't tasted the others, so we haven't. Compared. Yeah, the idea is to compare the three. And would you think it was under twenty dollars? I would hope that it was around twenty dollars. Yeah, it seems to fit its price point well. That's a good question. Hmm. Yourself? I think uh, if somebody would offer me a glass of this for, for supper, uh, I wouldn't think it was under $20. It's, it tastes like a, a wine that's worth more than $20 a bottle to me. So Frank, what did you bring for us to uh, try out and tell us a little bit about it? Well, uh, would you like to uh, have the wine? Sure. Would you like to cheat? Some notes in the back. So, hey. <laughs> I don't cheat, Ron. So it's a Cesare wine, which I'm very familiar with. However, it's a, it's made from Sangiovese, uh, the Sangiovese grape variety, which I'm not too familiar with. Uh, I'm used to uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon mm. and a combination of Cabernet and other grape varieties, but I've never really tried uh, just 100% uh, Sangiovese wine. So, you know, I, I've, been, I've been seeing this uh, in, in the liquor store uh, for quite some time now, and I wanted to pick it up, and I said, this is a perfect opportunity to give it a try. We, we love to provide these opportunities. <laughs> well, thank you Fre for that. Frequently. Well, Ron, that's a pretty good pour. <laughs> Am I staying a while? Well, it's been known to happen. <laughs> San Giovese, of course, is the grape uh, used in Chianti. So if you're, if you're used to drinking Chianti or Chianti Classico, that's the Sangiovese. But right. uh, depending on the age of it, uh, where they're making it, who's making it, there's a big variety, a range of, uh, of wines. It can be some dirt cheap stuff and some right. really, really elegant wines. Well, I guess right. that can be said by, you know, for yeah, many of the grapes. grapes yeah. So, um, which helps to distinguish the finer houses from others. And yeah. I think uh, Umberto Cesari, if I'm, is Cesare. 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 Good job. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. I've been practicing. I have an Italian friend <laughs> or two. Um, in general, Sangiovese is a, a lighter style wine. Yeah. Right. In general. Now, um, Cesare has uh, built his uh, reputation over the years. I think they've been uh, in business now for over 50 years, and it's a nice rags to riches story. Yeah, right. right. The guy started with nothing, uh, and I, you know, you said it best uh, earlier on. Is uh, really from nothing. He bought a parcel of land and had a had a dream, and he's worked his a, butt off, hmm? and he has built quite the uh, quite the empire. What's fun is, uh, this is what we were talking about earlier. 
you read about the president of IBM or the president even of Apple, and never in the first paragraph did they say how passionate they are about their industry. Yeah, their Whereas winemakers are passionate about what they do. Whether they're making one bottle or they're making a hundred thousand bottles, their the passion for their craft is what makes them stand out. And yeah. that's what's fun and that well, just, I think is an let's example. Let's drink some yeah. passion, passion juice. Cheers, cheers, cheers friends. Did we talk about the price point of this wine? Not no, you have not touched on that. So please do. How yeah. much does this wine go for? So it's twenty-two ninety, and the wines that we're we're looking at between twenty and twenty-five, right? I know that the next one is going to be a little bit over that. Right. You get a little. It's going to sound a bit a little bit wacky, but a little touch of perfume. Yes, that's what I said. There's definitely a floral note yeah. to both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, so guys, between the two, between the uh, Reserva and the um, the Vintage, which uh, do you prefer? I'm not leaning towards the Vintage myself. Y yeah, I would give a slight advantage to the Vintage. Uh, on earlier tasting, I would have given the advantage to the Reserva, but uh, I'm leaning more towards the Vintage now. Yeah, it's just got a I little, 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 little bit more going on, a little more complexity, a little more yummy in the tummy. Yeah, it's got some character like you do, Ron. Thank you. Oh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the, the bouquet, the nose just comes mm. steaming out of this glass where the other two, you have to, you have to yeah. kind of fight for it a little bit. Yeah, I you agree. have to draw more. I agree. Draw more. Yeah, <laughs> this one, uh, you don't. It's right there. And it's very nice. How much of, is it, how much of it is that we know it's a Liano and we know Liano's good? I think, well, uh, I, I, I think a little. Um, because I, I, we are been doing this for a little bit, and I know you drink your fair share of wine. Right. So the minute you pop open the cork and you know swizzle it around and have a have a sniff and have a drink, you know that yeah, this know. is you know much right better. Away. Right. The finish on this one is not even comparable to the other two. Feel any of that uh, baking spice that I mentioned earlier? Or not really. I I do get cinnamon get for somehow. Yeah, there's there's a I, bit I of a. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I got a little bit of spiciness in there. Find yeah. out. You know, cinnamon, nutmeg. There's a, a little taste of Christmas. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what and baking spice always brings yeah. me to that. Uh, Liana, time. a little taste of Christmas. <laughs> yeah, marketing should be in your. Uh, yeah, so that, that's what makes wine tasting so so interesting right so you you taste something in the wine and i taste something else and you tasted something else as well right. and, uh, and that little something that you don't like tears you away from it and right. the little something that you do like you know just yeah. draws you in I mean, uh, yeah. to me wine is a, a segment of the of the art world where everyone has their own preferences right um, you might love one thing and not love another and they're, they're all so unique and different and they're personal so Getting back to this wine, let's just summarize uh, what we feel about this one and then and a, a quick comparison of all three. This is a good wine. This is a good Definitely wine. Definitely is a good wine. This is $27 at our local wine shop. So that's you Canadian get $27. dollars dollars worth of wine out of the bottle. You definitely do. Not now, only get the shatters your expectations, but it definitely meets them. I you agree. will enjoy this wine for the price, for sure. Uh, compared to the $23 bottle, so let's round things up. Is it worth an extra four bucks? I think so. I agree. I think that... Yeah. I definitely agree. You open it, there's more There's more punch, and it definitely lasts it's longer. A, it's a better wine. You just have to pay a little more. Yeah, than the other. right. Let's, uh, let's just go over our, our favorites and, uh, and relate it to the price. Do we, did we think that the prices of these wines were in line with our enjoyment of them? I definitely do. I think that the, I mean, Liano, not surprisingly, came comes out on top. The more expensive wine, we agree that we preferred. Right. Yep. Uh, it's not always the case. No, and as for the other two, I think that uh, $3, ball, uh, $3 difference, um, the $3 more expensive wine uh, won out. Uh, in the they, all, they all fit in in the order of their prices. They right. definitely do. Um, in our opinion. That is our opinion. Do us a favor, hit the subscribe button below. We always appreciate that. 
And I think the moral of today's show is you can't go wrong with Umberto Cesare. No, definitely, definitely not. Agree. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to go out and buy a few more bottles of, uh, of uh, all three. No winemaking in your family at all? Uh, we do make our own wine, yeah. but uh, it definitely doesn't compare to what we your, were trying uh, out your, today. Yourself or your family? Uh, my family. Yeah? My family, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I can even bring some. Because <laughs> it's an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste. Ron has had I'm some. all for acquiring. My grandfather made wine out of apricots and blueberries that he picked really? himself. Really? Interesting. It was also acquired, but the acquisition is what's fun. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you, I guess as the uh, as it ages, you know, we're not talking about years. We're talking about months or, or weeks. <laughs> yeah, or weeks. You're exactly. As it ages a little bit, it gets better. Yeah. So it smooths uh, out a bit. It smooths out a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd love to try some Shooter Brother bottle. Yeah. Next time. Next time. There you go. Well, thanks a lot, Frank, for coming on our show. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure. So hopefully we'll see you again soon, and uh, hopefully the uh, the viewers uh, go up like you've promised. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. And drink this.